where is the this thing opg is there with you yeah yeah so hello everybody we are uh, starting with uh, mandibular disimpaction surgery uh, it is a tooth on the lower left quadrant yeah that is the third quadrant and it is a distroangular mandibular disimpaction just uh, have a look at the tooth clinically yeah please see that is the tooth hmm and it is a position a yeah class 2 kind of disimpaction it is a distroangular category which means it is uh, the most difficult as per the difficulty index ideally i would have like to show you a mesoangular or a horizontal because we can do the sectioning or the odontectomy procedure in that but in the distroangular normally we do not do a sectioning yeah so that is one step that we are going to mostly skip all right and i will show you the opg just have a look at the opg yeah so it is a typical distroangular you can see the root formation is almost 3/4 and the roots are almost touching the roof of the inferior alveolar canal all right now the problem with distroangulars is that once you start elevating the tooth it moves back into the ramus of the mandible so there is always a level of bone obstruction which is there yeah and that that is what makes the extraction a little difficult because there is always a interference to the path of elevation so now i'll be starting with the nerve block and we are giving a classic inferior alveolar block for this tondugad mutta So we are using a 26 gauge long needle. Yeah. I have hit the bone. See the key to giving a good inferior alveolar block is that Can they hear? Yeah. The patient's mouth should be wide open. Yeah. And you have to be a little higher up. so that you are between the terigo mandibular raphe and the anterior border of the ramus as you can see my thumb is at the coronoid notch in this case and now injecting for the lingual nerve a little anterior and medial ashwini are you okay huh yeah and now we'll be giving for the long buckle a uh, open your mouth hmm? so just buckle and just distill to the last standing molar in the retromolar triangle that is where we give for the long buckle nerve you can actually feel the retromolar triangle just medial to the external oblique ridge so now we will wait for uh, around 2 to 3 minutes for this block to act don't band kar put off the light
कसा वाटतो आता कुठे भारी वाटतय डाव्या साईडला भारी वाटतय गालावर होटावर फक्त गालावर वाटतय या सो शी इज कम्प्लेनिंग ऑफ टिंगलिंग नमनेस ऑन द चीक अँड शी इज सेईंग ऑन वन कॉर्नर ऑफ द माउथ या सो आयडियली इट शुड बी दॅट ओनली वन कॉर्नर ऑफ द माउथ बिकॉज वी हॅव गिवन द लेफ्ट साइडेड नव ब्लॉक now i will check for the objective symptoms all right now for checking the objective symptoms for the inferior alveolar we check on the attached gingiva between the premolars yeah kai samajle tochla ha and for the long buckle we are checking on the attached gingiva okay behind ata kai dukhla okay so now the next step is the incision now how do we take the incision have a look okay <coughs> now the incision we will start with the re anterior releasing incision it has three components for the mandibular third molar the anterior releasing the crevicular incision <coughs> and that is followed by a distal releasing incision so there are two releasing incisions and one crevicular incision so the anterior releasing incision i will take from the buccal groove of the second mandibular molar going at a 45 degree angle into the buccal vestibule now with this you have to be careful that you do not go too deep because there is a facial artery exactly in that area if you go too deep you can rupture the facial artery so the incision you normally keep about 1 cm in length then i go around the gingival crevice of the second molar the third molar and i come to the distal surface of the third molar and at the distal half of the third molar i give the distal releasing incision which goes into the buccal mucosa at an angulation yeah an angulation of about again 45 degree towards the buccal mucosa so you have to be a little buccal and not go on the lingual side because there are important structures on the lingual side suction <coughs> Yeah, now I'm giving the crevicular, going behind. Giving the distal releasing incision. Yeah. Now we use a periosteal elevator. Uh, always start the flap separation from the anterior releasing incision end. there's a lot of fibrous tissue a lot of fibrous bands over there so i need to revise the incision a bit yeah and this is a sweeping motion that we use okay so as to separate the flap once the initial uh, cut is taken yeah so we use a sweeping motion like this and just push the flap laterally yeah and you can see the mandible is nicely opening up over here yeah you can see over here how i'm just pushing the pushing the flap laterally that is the periosteum if you can see it just over the mandible yeah so i need to push the periosteum separate the periosteum because it is quite firmly adherent to the mandible and till the time that you have the periosteum over there the flap reflection becomes a little difficult because as you know the periosteum 
is firmly adherent to the underlying bone. Hmm? This is the anterior border of the ramus. If yeah, this is the anterior border of the ramus, coming down as the external oblique ridge over here. So I'm just pushing over the anterior border of the ramus. Yeah, and now the tooth is nicely exposed. So there is bone which is covering the distal aspect of the tooth and there is a lot of bone on the buckle. If you can see the cervical uh, margin of the tooth is not exposed. There is bone right up to the middle half of the tooth. So I need to drill the bone so that I expose the cervical area. Hmm? And for this I am going to use a 702 or a 703 straight fissure burr. I will be starting with a number 702 which is a thinner burr. And then I will be expanding my cut with the 703 straight fissure burr. One very important thing to remember is that whenever you are going to cut the bone, you always need to do a flushing or irrigation. Ashwini, are you alright? Yeah. yeah. So, flushing with betadine and saline or even just normal saline is very important whenever you are making a bone cut or you are drilling into the bone, otherwise the bone necrosis very fast. Hmm? So never cut without irrigation. Yeah. Hand piece. Yeah, so this is the number 702 straight fissure burr. 703 point card, huh? 702 straight fissure burr, it's thin in dimension, so the initial cut we always make with the number 702 because the cut is thin yeah, and it gives us the uh, proper guideline for the remaining cut and now this is a thicker burr, it, it is a 703 straight fissure burr, yeah? so for widening the initial cut I will use a number 703. Where is the foot control? Flushing drop by drop, huh? Thoda speed vada huh. Suction, suction. Thoda vada vada, thoda vada vada. Hmm. Full hai ka? Huh? Nahi na? Huh. Drop by drop, yeah. So I have starting, I have started the cut. Now remember, whenever I am giving the cut, my handpiece is always parallel to the long axis of the tooth yeah? and I am as close to the tooth as possible. So I am always drilling against the tooth and not the bone. Yeah? I go all around the tooth with the straight fissure burr. Yeah? Just see irrigation water huh. and keep sucking at the same time. No? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going all around the tooth. Yeah. So as I go down, I will feel a dip into the medulla. Yeah, the bone. Now, right now, I'm in the cortex, and I have to go into the medullary bone. So once I dip into the medulla, I will feel the bone going a little soft. Don't come into my vision. Irrigate from the side. Yeah, so I'm going all around the tooth, touching the tooth. Yeah, and I have almost got a medullary dip, which means that I have cut the cortical bone. Yeah. I 
I'm slightly widening the cut. Normally, many surgeons prefer to call it the guttering of the bone. Yeah? But the gutter is a very layman term in that sense. But yeah, it actually looks like a gutter in one sense. Okay? Take irrigation. Azu next syringe hacker. Fill up one more syringe. Yeah. Put it, put it. Keep the syringe and put it. Ashwini, are you okay? Huh? Yeah. Hmm? This is not flexible, nah? Throw upper lelo. So you're not supposed to touch that. Okay. Huh? So I've done the initial cutting of the bone and I'm going to try and elevate this tooth. There is no uh, need for sectioning in this case. As you can see, uh, there is the tooth is almost at the position A, that is at the level of the seven. And after removal of the initial bone, yeah, uh, we will try doing a elevation with a straight elevator. Unless we feel the need to section it, we will see later. But as of now, there is no need of sectioning. So always now when you are elevation you have to see that the uh, angle of the mandible is supported. Vaishali, Mukte Pratik so So always the angle of the mandible has uh, angle of the mandible has to be supported. So your assistant will support with four fingers. Firm pressure has to be given at the angle of the mandible. Yeah. Now this is the third quadrant. So the operator will stand in front of the patient. Yeah. And put the elevator at the cervical. Okay. Thoda pressure baate na. Ashwini. Yeah. So always go from the cervical as possible and it's a wrist movement. Always remember when you, whenever you are elevating, it is always a wrist movement and not from your hand or from the elbow. Yeah, so it is a very controlled pressure, but it is also a very firm pressure. Yeah, and the operator's hand, finger will support the adjacent tooth. In this case, it is the seven and the tooth that you are elevating so that you can feel the movement of the eight. elevator there. So whenever you are not working, always remember to keep a pressure pack in the mouth, ask the patient to close, so that if there is any oozing, it is always under control. Turn band kar Ashwini. Ugar, turn ugar. Support. Four fingers at the angle. So as you can see, the tooth is moving now. Suction. This suction la flexibility na hai, zard hai na. Tamar asa the bend nahi karta it. So there is a little bit of a distal obstruction, as you can see. Aditya, can you show them? There's a distal obstruction of the bone. Uh, that is interfering with the occlusal movement. So I'm going to drill a little bit more on the disto angular part. Yeah, I'll show you with the elevator. See, uh, we have done the bone drilling here, but this is the part that is obstructing. So a bit of the bone over there, I'm going to again grind off. Wait, wait, no flushing. Yeah. That is the obstructing part of the bone. So 
So that is the thing with distoangular disinfection is that, as I said, as we keep elevating the tooth, the it always keeps on moving distally and it pushes against the ramus. And so you need to keep on removing the a, a ledge of the bone on the distal aspect huh? or the distobuccal aspect rather. Yeah. So Dr. Neha is showing me the OPG right now and uh, I can see in that the amount of bone that is still there on the distal aspect that is causing this kind of obstruction. So once again, we'll try elevating. So as you can see, the tooth is moving, but again, there is some obstruction which is there. It could also be the <coughs> soft tissue Sometimes that is covering, so you need to do the soft tissue separation properly, more towards the lingual. Ashwini, yeah. Support inferior border. Suction. So again as I elevate again the bigger dimension of the tooth comes out and again there is some more obstruction from the bone which is there which again needs to be polished. See you can see over here at this disto buccal corner as I elevated the tooth, this much of the tooth has been elevated, but this distobuccal corner, again the bone is obstructing. Where is the flushing? Slow. On the tooth. Suck. Slow, slow flushing.
Ashwini comfortable? Yeah. So the one good thing is that the block has uh, acted very well. So our patient is very comfortable in this case. Yeah. Open your mouth. Lower molar forcep. Lower molar. At the cow horn there. Support. Suction. Yeah. So. So again, there is a distal lock. So that is the problem with distal angulars. If there is a lot of uh, distal bone coverage, it keeps on obstructing the tooth. Yeah, so you can see another ledge of bone over here. <sighs> Slow flushing. Suction, suction, suction. Slow flushing. 
just drop drop So we'll elevate once again. Are uh, Lokesh, Dusra Azun elevator de. See, sometimes you have to also see the size of the elevator because it has to fit the interdental area properly, it has to engage the undercut. Huh? So many times the use of different elevators with different blade shapes and sizes that also is very important choosing the right kind of elevator according to the situation hmm? there is uh, no one elevator that fits all the tooth yeah so we are going to try another elevator now Support four fingers at the angle. So, come Aditya focus. So, the right elevator has run the trick. Yeah, as you can see, I have used a very bulky elevator. You can see this. It's, a, it's the most bulky elevator that I had. Yeah, and there was some interdental bone where the burr couldn't reach. So, the elevator has removed that bone. Okay. Just by means of the shear force. Yeah. And you can see how the tooth is come out. Yeah. So I always stress that you choosing the right instruments is very important. It is not that sometimes you keep struggling and struggling with one instrument, with one elevator, okay? And sometimes just simply changing the instrument does the trick. So it's very important. These are some practical tips that you have to choose the right instrument and that only comes with time and with experience. It is a knack, you know, which you cannot get overnight. Because in the textbooks, they will teach you elevate with a straight elevator, right? But that is just a generalization. Suction. Yeah. So I will just show you the bone cavity over there. Yeah. So you can see how much of bone that we have drilled on the distal side of the tooth. Aditya just show them. Yeah. You can see over here almost this much bone on the distal aspect till here. Huh? You, we have removed. You can see that groove over here inside the socket. 
Hmm? You cannot go on the lingual much uh, because lingually always it's there's a lingual nerve which is there. So you have to be always careful whenever you are drilling, and we never go really lingual. We are always drilling on the buccal aspect and the distal buccal aspect and a little more towards the distal lingual, but we don't actually go towards the lingual plate. Yeah. Now always once you do that, you check for the follicle. It's very important always to check for the follicle. And the best instrument to do that is with a curette. Yeah. So I am just moving my curette in the socket, and there is some bits of soft tissue. That is the follicle which is there. Yeah. So we have to see, and most of this tissue is attached to the distal side of the seven. Ashwini, huh? Tooth is out. Okay. So it's on the distal aspect of the second molar. A lot of soft tissue is there, and if you leave that back, then it can actually give rise to a, a granuloma or a cyst formation later. So it is very important to remove uh, this kind of soft tissue. Another very important thing to do is the finger. Huh? Always move your finger over the socket so that you can feel all the sharp points. Now here I can feel uh, some pieces of sharp bone on the lingual side, okay, and on the distal side of the socket. Even the buccal cortex is sharp because we have drilled the bone. Now whenever you are drilling on the lingual or a rounding of the bone on the lingual, always make it a point that you keep a elevator there first so that you. Separate the lingual flap a little away from the burr, round burr. So I am going to use round burr for uh, rounding of the bone edges now. It's छोटा है का number six है. सगरे same है. कुटे हाँ ओके बट दिस इस ओके ओके अश्विनी ओपन योर माउथ या सो आई एम गोइंग टू राउंड ऑफ क्विकली नाउ द बकल कॉर्टेक्स फर्स्ट ऑलवेज फ्लश द बोन व्हेनेवर यू यूज़ द बर नेवर फॉरगेट टू फ्लश फ्लशिंग मैं या flush on the bone hmm. suction see flushing and suctioning should always happen at the same time Yeah, so I'm now on the distal lingual part, which is quite a bit sharp. So I have to round it off. Yeah, uh, hold it. Yeah, leave the suction. Yeah, uh, leave the irrigation. Yeah, hold it like this. Huh? So now I'm going to round off on the lingual side with a small burr because I can't leave a sharp lingual edge over there. So I use a small burr. This is a number five small burr. See, you are out, Sanika. Be inside the flap. Yeah. Open. See, the key to good assistance is that you always watch. Huh? Once your eyes are on the surgical field, you will never go wrong. If you are, if you are not watching, then you will always slip. Open your mouth, Ashwini. Uh, so I always uh, retract the lingual flap. Yeah, and you can see that uh, lingual piece of soft bone over there. I have to round it off. Yeah. 
so now what is the next step we have to irrigate yeah irrigate it well with betadine before we close just uh, give me the bar sanika give me the bar yeah that's okay betadine flushing hmm? always do a good irrigation before you close so that if there are any loose pieces of bone okay or soft tissues they will be flushed off it is always a good practice yeah and always use the suction when you are irrigating so that the patient doesn't aspirate yeah yeah so now we'll be starting with a suturing give me sutures suture there so we are using a 30 black silk over here yeah 30 black silk it's a non absorbable suture material as you all know kai shotte scissor there scissor there come on retract hmm? so when you are suturing always the assistant will hold the flap a little away the retractor will be a little away so that you have a lot of free tissue to suture over there hmm? see now remember whenever you are doing a suturing for a third molar surgical extraction always you suture this part which is immediately distal to the second molar yeah because that is the point where pocket formation happens most of the times if it is not close tight because of the food and the um, debris collection so what you do is that always take this part which is just from where you start the releasing incision and just distal to the second molar you put the first suture and close that area well akar okay if you can't put your needle through both the tissues at one time do it one by one first go through the buccal then hold the lingual flap and go through the lingual so as you can see the lingual tissue is quite fragile so it tears off through the suture thread आकर एंड डोंट पुट योर लिंग्वल सूचर्स टू डीप हाँ बिकॉज अ लिंग्वल नव इज वेरी सुपरफिशियल इन द लिंग्वल फ्लैप ओवर देयर सो टेक इट एज सुपरफिशियल एज पॉसिबल अबाउट टू मिलीमीटर्स फ्रॉम द एज ऑफ द लिंग्वल मार्जिन सक्शन बाबू सक्शन करो suck 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 see as you can see it's a very nice and tight closure distal to the second molar so now there is no chance of any pocket formation over there because it's a tight approximation yeah it's almost completely closed with just one suture even the distal releasing is closed where is the blade सिस्टर सीजर नहीं दिली is uh, this thing yeah yeah watch 
So there's a very good approximation, Aditya showed them. Already with one suture, all the tissues have come together. I'm not going to close the uh, measles releasing because it's approximated already. And sometimes it also serves as a good drainage point for all that collection. So patient doesn't get much swelling later on. And especially if it is well approximated like this, then there is no need to give a, a suture at the anterior releasing incision. So just one more suture and we are done. Suction. Suck, suck, suck. Out. Ashwini, open. Yeah. So watertight closure is what is very important. Once you have a watertight good closure, then most of your complications like dry socket and all the other complications can be prevented. Huh? So suturing is the key to good post-operative healing of the wound. Yeah. So I'll just show them once leaf one minute yeah so everybody please have a closer look huh? so this is we have closed the socket yeah it's a good watertight closure right and now i'll be giving a pressure pack thank you so much for watching